Good morning, Bethlehem family, and we're just glad to have you, even if we're uh, live streaming and we're recording this morning. And um, you know what? Praise God. No matter what's going on, let's just give him all the glory and the thanks, and this will work out just like everything else works out when he's in control. You know, in these troubling times, God still wants, to, wants us to be his hands and feet. He wants us to take his message and get it out there. And there's no other better way to do it than being a soul on fire for Christ. Amen? Amen. Fino, go ahead. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Good morning, church. Uh, sometimes we are uh, souls on fire in this someplace, and sometimes there's like tech stuff behind the scenes in the internet that's on fire. So thank you for bearing with us this morning in this whole kind of uh, live stream's not working, so we're doing some workaround methods, but hopefully you find this video and you can come and worship Jesus with us. Uh, so glad to have you, though. So glad that you're choosing to prioritize time being in the Word, as we always do as we enter into a time of worship. Let's begin with prayer. Please join me. Father, we thank you for this time to, to dive into your Word, to sing praises to you, Lord, and we just pray that you would bless it, that, that ultimately, Lord, uh, no matter 
the season we're in right now, whether it's just like a season of drought or it's a season of abundance, Lord, that we would still just be clinging to you as our rock, our redeemer, and our foundation in the midst of it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's continue now in song. Why you ever chose me has always been a mystery. All my life I've been told I belong at the end of the line. With all the ever not quite, with all I never get it right. But it turns out that the ones you were looking for all this time, I'm just nobody. Had things right. David brought a rock to the sword fight. Pick twelve outsiders, nobody would be chosen, and you changed the world with the moral of the storyline. Everybody gets a purpose. So when I hear that devil stop talking to me, saying, Who do you think you are? I say, I'm just a new. Another blood part fades the member of the family. And if they all forget my name, well, that's fine with me. I'm living for the world to see nobody but Jesus. So let me go down, down, down in history. Go down in history. going on in these times, which is very troubling and we don't know. We never know what the next day is going to bring. But we can't lose hope. No matter what's happening, we can't lose hope. God is in control. Jesus is there. And uh, he's blessing us and he loves us no matter what's going on. You just got to remember that. And I have this hope and we have this song for you. As I walk this great unknown Questions come and questions go 
Was there purpose for the pain? Did I cry these tears in vain? I don't want to live in fear. I want to trust that you are near. Trust your grace can be seen in both triumph and tragedy. Depth of my soul In the blood of the fire You are with me And you won't let go But sometimes my faith feels thin Like the night will never end Will you catch every tear Or will you just leave me for about 2,000 years, the church has had a practice of whenever we gather, whenever we gather together, we confess our sins to one another and to the Lord. And um, one of the great questions we can ask ourselves that's a little more reflective that way is to say, what are we hoping and trusting in? Uh, This morning, we had a real shocker here. We're like, man, we're hoping and trusting in this technology to work, for the service to get out, and for everything working with Vimeo and all these connection points. And we don't know where the glitches have uh, occurred. But even like in your life at a granular level, when things go wrong, when things get tough, what are you hoping in? What are you trusting in? Because one of the lessons that we learn in Scripture is that when we hope, when we trust, when we look uh, first and foremost to the things of this world to try and satisfy us, it's always going to leave us longing for something more. Uh, I invite you during this next song to just take a minute, look at your life and say, what are the things I'm I'm hoping and what are the things uh, I'm trusting in more than the one who is ultimately the giver of those things? Let's sing now to love you back. Sunrise, you knew my name. You knew I'd fail you over and over. Still love me all the same. Yeah, you still love me anyway. The way you don't give up on me, you really got a hold on me. Give me more than I deserve. You become my everything, the only reason that I sing. Beauty is you chose me first 
And I still can't believe That you've loved me for eternity And what's so marvelous to me Is that I finally get, I finally get I get to love you, to love you back I get to love you I wanna live like I can't afford to spend another second without you. Wait, well, don't give up on me. Really gotta hold on to you know that I deserve. You become my everything. The only reason that I see beauty is you chose me first. God who loves us so much that despite our, our faults, our failures, despite our screw-ups, uh, Jesus went to the cross out of his great love for us, uh, took the weight of our sin, died, and then three days later was raised from the dead so that we can know beyond the shadow of a doubt that we are forgiven. It's my privilege to announce to you, church, you are forgiven in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, and we're going to continue now in a time of prayer. I want to invite some of our uh, Crossfire team forward to lead us in that. My brothers and sisters of Bethlehem SCV, our friends and family joining us from uh, your homes around the, the country, uh, it's that time in our worship or we get to go before our Lord in prayer. But did you realize today is the last Sunday of the month? I did not until it was far upon us. That is why Crossfire, we lead in the prayers today. <laughs> it's an opportunity, of course, and uh, it's one we are very grateful for. And today I'll be blessed to bring those to you with my, uh, my lovely niece. Uh, I'm going to open our time in prayer, and then we'll take a brief moment to go to God individually during a time of silent prayer. And then Noel will continue our time praying together. So now, please join us as we humble ourselves before the Lord. Heavenly Father, what an awesome morning it has been already. Thank you, Lord, for inspiring the words of the songs we've been singing, for blessing our band with the talents to bring these songs to life, and for the truth we proclaimed in each of them. And I'm especially moved by the song we just finished, To Love You Back. That's a beautiful song, beautifully sung by Ariane, 
and we used, we used to use it in crossfire worship time and again. I get emotional when I remember sharing that concept with my friends, my brothers and sisters in Crossfire, that this song contained the very meaning of life, the reason we were created, the reason why we can endure, and it is the reason we celebrate. Before time began, you knew us. You knew everything about us, every good, every bad, every success, and every failure. And you loved us anyway, absolutely, completely, and without any reservation. And now, this life, this brief time between birth and death, we get to love you back. We get to praise you. We get to serve you. We get to share you. There are no limits. The love and grace you pour into us has no end. And now, while we draw this life's breath, we are given the privilege to be your loving hands and feet to the world. As the song says, it's all the more amazing to realize you've always known we wouldn't and we couldn't earn it. So you give us everything we need, pay every debt, and fill us with your spirit that by your strength we get to love you back, to love you with every part of who we are because of whose we are. Father, please bless this church and congregation, our preschool and preschool families. Please bless our neighbor churches and schools our neighborhood businesses, and the many homes that surround our campus and make up our community. Please bless our city, the first responders that work to keep us safe, the medical professionals who are on the front lines of this current crisis, the local, state, and national leaders who are tasked with responding and leading in a very, very tough time. Please bless and watch over those serving in our military, at home and abroad, and please bless their families who must endure so much time apart from one another. Please intervene in the lives of those who are persecuted for your sake, giving them the faith and the strength to endure. And we ask you to bless and protect expectant mothers and the beautiful new lives you have gifted to them. God, you are a God of sympathy, and we thank you for that. And we lift up the family and friends of those who are in mourning, and we ask you to comfort each of them. Please fill all who grieve, the, with the lo who grieve the loss of a loved one with your love and your peace, easing their sadness and confusion. May they be strengthened from the promise of the resurrection, knowing that this death is not the end. And filled with your strength, may they be a witness to all those around them as they proudly proclaim, I have this hope. Lord, there are many in our congregation who are asking for your guidance in their lives. Many more who need it and have yet to ask. Many in our community, our state, our nation, and throughout the world that are looking for your help to make wise decisions. And some are facing tough financial or medical choices. Some need help with relationships or careers. We ask you, Lord, help us to hear you. Help us to trust you. Help us to wait upon you. Please, Lord, guide and inform our decisions, and please bless the outcomes. Give us peace and replace our fear and doubts with trust in you, the Lord. And now we come to you in silent prayer, lifting up to you the prayers of our hearts. Thank you for hearing our heart's prayers. Father, we thank you for who you are and for what you've done for us. We are thankful that we also know whose we are. So I pray for those who do not know you and deeply need your guidance. All of us stumble through life from time to time, so please uplift us and save us. Continue to be the light that so many wish to seek and provide them the strength to reach for it. Gracious Father, we know this world is sick, sick with disease, mistrust, vanity, and so much more. We need you more than we could ever realize to save us from ourselves. So please watch over the sick and the hurting. I pray you provide healing where it's applicable and peace where the battle is challenging. 
I ask you to blanket our great nation with your protective arms and help guide our leaders through this difficult time. Please guide our doctors and first responders who are taking care of the sick and guide the scientists who are working so incredibly hard to create a vaccine. While we ask for so much during this time, most often we forget to thank you for everything you've been doing behind the scenes. We thank you for giving us strength, patience, and a voice. Thank you for the many blessings we receive from you and for keeping us healthy during this time. We're grateful to live where we do and for the freedoms we know many do not have. Help us to remember what's important, life, family, friends, and having you beside us every day. I am especially thankful to those on earth who show relentless love, patience, and understanding, even when we don't deserve it. We know these individuals speak your truth and reflect your heart. Thank you for this time in prayer, Lord. Thank you that now we get to love you back and every day, every day of our lives. Help us to remember the truth, always. So now we lift up all the prayers of our congregation, our families, and indeed, the prayers of our hearts. In your prayer, your Son, our King and Savior, taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Uh, we're going to continue now with a time of tithes and offerings before the Lord. If you're somebody who, like, you've just been checking things out with us for a season, or, or it's COVID, and you're just, uh, you don't even know what church is all about, you're just tuning in because somebody invited you to, I just want you to know you are our guest. Please do not feel compelled to give. This is a way for the people of God to say everything we have is a blessing, and we want to give back to him. If you would like to partner with us here at Bethlehem, there's three ways you could do so. Uh, you could go through the app. If you search Bethlehem SCV in the app store, you can go through our website, BethlehemSCV.com. And then lastly, um, you can actually just mail in a tithe check like normal that way. Also, um, it is hard to, to digitally shepherd, especially on a morning like this morning, where it's like, I don't know how many people got the memo or are still with us. So um, if you could check in with us, BethlehemSCB.com slash check in, or if you're watching on our website, it's under the video there, or if you're on the app, uh, it's under the Sunday morning section, and just let us know you're here. Let us know how we could be praying for you. That would be a wonderful blessing to us. Thank you. The Lord I come, I confess, bowing here, I find my rest. Without you, I fall apart, you're the one that guides my heart. Lord, I need you, oh, I need you, every hour I need you, my one defense, my righteousness. is more where grace is found is where you are and where you are Lord I am free holiness is Christ in me
So teach my song to rise to you When temptation comes my way When I cannot stand, I fall on you Jesus, you're my hope and stay It is good to bring the word this morning, church. Uh, you know, there's a story of one of the, the previous pastors here, Marty Brower, who when he first got the call out to Santa Clarita, he, he found it on a map and he found where the church was and he noticed that right behind the church, there was the beautiful looking Santa Clara River. And so he got really excited about, you know, sneaking out of the office to go fishing early in the afternoon and just all of the awesome things that he could do running out to that river river, but if you've ever been to the Santa Clara, Clara River, you know it's actually an underground river. It looks a lot more like this 99% of the time. It's just full of all sorts of, of random shrubs and bushes and, and maybe the occasional kind of tree found on the edge. We're going to be looking at Psalm 1 today, a, a beautiful, beautiful psalm that talks about how those who meditate on the law of the Lord are, are like a tree built beside a river. I know the Santa Clara is an underground river, but what's so fascinating about those kind of trees is, is in seasons where there is drought, where there is hardship, where things get difficult, trees actually have roots that will dig even deeper to find the water they need to sustain them. Uh, what a beautiful picture that is for the time that we're in right now, a time where I think there's a lot of people that are just in a season of drought. There's a lot of people that are frustrated because they're unsure about the financial world or they don't know what, what next month's income is going to look like. A lot of people that are trying to figure out, okay, do I need to relocate for job opportunities? Do I, have to, do I get to see my grandkids? I feel like my family's abandoned me during this season. A lot of people right now are just going through this this difficult season of drought. Uh, and we're going to look at Psalm 1 and what it teaches us uh, about those difficult times and how we as Christians are called to act. But um, before we do that, there's one other thing I want to let you know about. We actually recently um, updated our app a little bit. Um, I know there's a ton of technology that is glitching today, but one area that is not glitching is our app. And so uh, if you want to, we redid the way you can do sermon notes on a Sunday. So if you open up our app and go to uh, Sunday, there's kind of a, a little new and improved sermon notes bar there. You can tap that. There's fill in the blanks. There's uh, all sorts of boxes for you to just write whatever notes you want. And then if you want to keep them afterward, you can even email them to yourself. So uh, we have made it really friendly to help you kind of take notes and to better meditate on the Word of God that way. So uh, I'd invite you to do that. I think when you do that normally during a Sunday, um, it would actually have a video of the sermon itself that you could watch. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then also from there, you can even get to some other sections like the check-in and everything else. But uh, I'll let you play around with that stuff later. Let's dig into God's Word. Psalm 1, uh, beautiful start of the Psalms and read through it. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. 
He's like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. So, right off the bat in the psalm, we have this juxtaposition between two ways uh, of life almost. You have the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked. And the way of the righteous is compared to uh, a tree that's bearing fruit. It's meditating and delighting on the law of the Lord. And the way of the wicked is compared to chaff. Um, I don't know if any of you actually know what chaff is unless you come from like a farming background or something. It's, it's the husk on a kernel of wheat. And chaff is so light, it's so frail that you could actually toss the husk up in the air and the chaff would just blow away with the wind. It would go any which direction in which it was pulled. And it's such a contrast, right? Chaff just goes whichever way the wind takes it, but a tree is rooted and in times of hardship, those roots grow even deeper, so just hearing that comparison, I think we'll probably have a few questions of this text today right off the bat that I want to speak to. First off is this, a lot of people have questions. What's the fruit about in that tree? What's that all mean? Um, some people think, okay, does it mean that the righteous are rich? Are they taken care of? No, 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 it doesn't. See, some people see this psalm and they get this idea that says, if I am righteous enough, if I spend enough time meditating on God's law, if I spend enough time meditating on God's word, then I'll get everything I've ever dreamed of, then all of the things I've wanted, that promotion, that new car, that job, everybody liking me, all sorts of friends, all of that will come true. What's even sadder is that there's a number of, of Christian books in America that have sold this idea that if you just follow the Lord enough, every little blessing will come your way. But the problem is, as we look across Scripture, you'll tend to notice that the people that follow God closest, the people that uh, truly just meditate and live out the law of the Lord actually usually have the opposite happen, right? All of Jesus' disciples except for one were martyred, martyred. Most of the leaders in the Old and the New Testament who really follow God's will have a difficult and a very hard life. The reason why this is so important for us to recognize is because when, and notice I didn't say if, I said when hardship comes our way as Christians, we should not be surprised by it. Okay, don't, don't get this attitude that says, if I just follow God, if I just try hard enough, then everything's going to fall in a place. Because where that inevitably leads to is this idea that says, um, well, if I'm not getting everything I want despite following God, this all must be a liar. God's not answering my prayers, so he must not be reelected. Did you ever think for a second that then maybe God's not giving you something you want because you can't actually handle it? Because maybe it's actually so big that it's become an idol for you. I just, I don't want us to fall for this trap, church, of convincing ourselves that it's our righteousness, it's the things we do, and if we just try hard enough, then we'll get all of our dreams because it is a shipwreck for your faith. In fact, when you look at how the Bible as a whole, especially the Apostle Paul, talks about what it means to bear fruit, you get a very different picture than wealth and things beyond your wildest dreams. Paul, in his letter to the church in Galatia, that's Galatians 5, 23, writes about bearing fruit this way. He says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against these things, there is no law. So let me just ask you this question today. Do you feel like you embody 
those words Paul talked about? Do you feel like you embody the fruit of the Spirit? Like, like do people look at you and say, yeah, that's somebody who just exemplifies peace? Or could they just scroll through your Facebook history and know that's not the case? Do people look at you and say, hey, this is somebody who I just see as kind and caring, and when they talk to me, I see that they're full, that they actually see me as someone that's significant and not just a means to an end? Uh, do you exemplify patience? Are you, are you more like me when I get woken up at two or three in the morning by my son who lost his blanket? I'm like, dude, your blanket is right there. You have three others on top of you. Like, like how is this a problem? But, but here it is. I love you. Mwah. I'm an enabler. It's pretty bad. Um, <laughs> do you have goodness within you? Do people just look at you and say, wow, I just feel like they're positive, like they recognize even in the darkest situations that there is still overall hope? Uh, Do people say you are gentle, you are uh, quick to listen and slow to speak? Are you somebody who is full of self-control and discipline that way? Now, if you're anything like me, uh, you probably feel like you utterly fail in each of these categories. You probably are looking at this saying, I fall incredibly short and I am not enough. And here's why I love Psalm 1 is because he just points us back to this fundamental reality. The psalmist says, just meditate in delight on the law of the Lord, which kind of leads me to another question that I think is important for us today. It's this simple. What are your spiritual rhythms? What are your spiritual rhythms? Like, like, do you have a time in your life when you meditate, when you delight on the law of the Lord? Do you have a, a regular time that you're spending in prayer? I've kind of shared my story a little bit a few times where uh, for me, one of the things I found to be super helpful was even just to say, you know what, I'm going to install the YouVersion Bible app in my phone. And the first thing I'm going to do before I check a text message, email, anything else ever in the morning is I'm going to read through a devotional. And before I put my phone on the charger at night, I'm going to read through a uh, devotional. It just builds a healthy habit, kind of tying it to something that I'm already far too addicted to. Uh, But I mean, there's a million ways to do it, right? And here's why I think this is so important for us. If if the metaphor today is that uh, the delight of the one who has that, it was that tree that uh, roots grow into the streams of the Lord right? If that's fundamentally found in meditating and delighting in the law of the Lord, we as Christians should be able to say, yeah, this is my rhythm to do that. Maybe for you, it's not that devotional time. Maybe for you, it's saying, yeah, when I run, I'm listening to some sermons on podcasts. Maybe for you, it's saying, yeah, I have regular times every day where I'm calling a brother and sister up in Christ and I'm praying with or for them. Like, like I don't know what that rhythm is for you, but, but here's my challenge for you today, okay, it is to just, if you're at a place where you're saying, I'm not happy with that rhythm, I'm not comfortable, I want that rhythm to be more, I Uh, My challenge for you today is just to say, can I take one step in the right direction, right? Can you just literally take out your phone right now and say, I'm going to download the YouVersion Bible app and I'm just going to start some plan at random. What is your next step? Because hear me out in this, if right now you're at like spending zero minutes a day on average in scripture, just, just spending like 30 seconds or a minute is infinitely more. It's an awesome win. It's the right direction to head to. Now, will this devotional time mean that um, all your problems are going to be solved and you're just going to walk out of it every day just like, like holy Superman and everything you pray for will magically be accomplished? No, but it will point you more deeply and more fully to Jesus, which leads me to our final point in the sermon today. To meditate on the law of God is to meditate on Jesus. There's this beautiful story in the Gospel of John where after Jesus is risen from the dead, he's walking on a road with two men uh, who are kind of talking about all these things that that happened to him. And as he's walking on the road with these two men, he he points to how Jesus, how he is the embodiment of all of the fulfillment of the law and the prophets, how all of God's word is ultimately pointing to him. 
You know, we talked earlier about how Psalm 1 says that, that uh, the one who meditates and delights on the Lord is like a tree planted by streams of water. And I love just that simple reality that for a lot of trees, when they go through a season of drought, what tends to happen is they draw their roots even deeper into the ground so that they can have a more full and life-giving experience drawing from that water. So it's no surprise to us that Jesus, during his earthly ministry, actually says, I am the living water. You read about it earlier in the Gospel of John. He meets a woman at a well, and he says, if you keep drinking this water, you're going to be thirsty again, but I will give you living water, and whoever drinks of that will never go thirsty. Jesus will sustain us. He'll renew us. He will draw us to that source. In fact, that theme of living water, it's like woven all throughout the gospel of John. It's woven all throughout the New Testament. And perhaps the epitome of Jesus being that living water for us is when when he's hanging on the cross and he cries out, I thirst. Because the reality is that Jesus is that living water so that you and I can be sustained, that he faced the punishment of of being separated from God for our sins so that we ultimately could know him as that life-giving source of water. It's why when the soldiers pierced his side in John 19, his water and his blood had separated. That's a scientific thing that happens to bodies after time after they've passed away. And, And first came out blood and then came out water because Jesus is our living water. And through his death and through his resurrection, we can be assured of the promises of God, even in times of drought and even in times of hardship. It's kind of crazy because uh, actually in terms of drought right now, like over two-thirds of California, uh, according to drought.gov, is in some kind of drought, is in some kind of season where we just need water. But I feel like even just overall on a macro level across our nation right now, there is a lot of drought going on. There's a lot of difficulty going on, both for Christians and non-Christians alike. And Christians, I just, I want you to hear me out for a second, okay? You don't need to pretend like everything is magically okay. Like, I, I know as a Christian, it's easy to say, well, well, hey, I still have this going on. Like, like, I don't have it as bad as these people, or I don't have it as bad as this person. Or we always can go to, hey, there's, there's people in third world countries that just have it so much worse than we do. But I think it can just be a healthy and a realistic thing when we go before the Lord and we don't pretend like we don't have our pain or our suffering, but instead we are real with Him about what we are experiencing. And it even doubles when we're talking with other Christians, when we're talking with people around us in the body of Christ, that we can just be real about the hurts and the pains that we're going through. Like, it is okay to be talking to someone and say, hey, I'm angry, I'm frustrated in this season that I can't see my grandkids and Halloween is coming up. It's okay to say I'm just so frustrated with all the outrage that's going on politically and the fact that it just seems like everyone has lost their mind. I'm just saddened on all the loss and grief that's going on in the culture around us during this period because I truly believe that when we are honest with God and honest with one another about these things, it helps move us past them into an even better experience. It shows us realistically that we are in the season that we're in and helps us to draw our roots even more deep into that life-giving water. It's kind of crazy because even across the rest of the book of Psalms, they're full of examples like that. Like, like you think of King David, he had wealth beyond his wildest dreams, but, but a lot of his Psalms are Psalms of lament, Psalms of struggle, Psalms where he, he can't quite make sense of why God is doing what he's doing, and he is wrestling with the emotions that he's experiencing. So as we draw our time out today, I just pray that we as a church 
would be a place where we are comfortable expressing in reality where we are at with one another, that we don't need to hide things, we don't need to pretend we're doing better than we're doing, but that we could just freely share that because in those seasons of drought, when we are honest with God and honest with one another, it helps us to draw our roots deeper to that life-giving water that is Jesus. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you uh, for loving us, for being there for us, Lord. And, and God, I thank you for this beautiful psalm. Uh, Lord, teach us what it means to delight in you, to meditate on you. Lord, give us discipline. Give us holy habits, Lord, where we're just taking time each day to be in awe of the fact of just who you are, that you are king over all the cosmos, and yet at the same time that you care so much for us. Lord, I pray for all those who are part of our church and all those across our country right now who would just say they are in a season of drought where they just feel like they, they need something because they're on edge and times are rough and they have all sorts of questions about the future. Lord, I pray that we could be honest with one another about those opportunities and that you would teach us what it means in the midst of it to be honest with you and to draw our roots deeper into that life-giving water that is you, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, let's sing now about that holy water.
Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this time of worship this morning. Uh, we have a lot of things going on here at Bethlehem, um, more than I can even know off the top of my head, but we will give you the man who knows all of it off the top of his head, Rick Turwall, to give you the announcements. All right. Thank you. Quit talking about the top of my head, but uh, we are glad that you all hung in here with us this morning. Thanks to all the uh, technical people around here who worked so hard, too, to put this together. Um, yeah. But we do have a lot going on. Most of it is now we're kind of getting into that rhythm. Uh, Wednesday night, you know there's Bible study that uh, Pastor Joe and Ed Amy are leading. It's on Facebook at 7 p.m. Also on Wednesday, 6.30, the Confirmation Kids meet on Zoom. The Crossfire students also meet on Zoom. Um, if you want to know anything about that or any of our classes, check the website, BethlehemSCV.com. Uh, Thursday night, beyond. Y'all know about that, a chance to get into the uh, word a little deeper, get some other perspectives, so check that out. <coughs> I'm sorry. Saturday, our outdoor worship, our service of word and sacrament. This Saturday at 5.30, look for the reservations. Uh, the time changes next weekend, so probably something's going to change this Saturday after that, but this Saturday is still uh, going, so look for that uh, message and sign up. New class. Grief recovery method. Um, at, uh, you think about grief recovery, you think about loss of life, but right now everybody's got some sort of loss going on, uh, financial, relations, health. So we're going to uh, get together and have a class with a certified grief counselor. It starts uh, Thursday, November 5th at 6 o'clock. If you want to be a part of that, there's information on the website. You can also call a church office. So uh, check that out. And again, thank you so much for being with us today. Yes. Thank you all so much, and thanks for that update, Rick. I'm sure there's many of you saying, uh, my least favorite part of the service, the 915 hour, is not here. What are we going to do about that? Uh, you could probably just turn your radio to that static noise, and it would be just about as efficient. Uh, no, thank you all for being here with us in this time of worship this morning. We pray you experience the love of Jesus as you go from this place today. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.